Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Leon. I'm the creative director of Oligo Scan. Uh, today, um, I don't know if you, if you saw my other presentation, but um, it's, it was a little more extensive. I had 50 minutes, so I only have 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to keep it a little bit of brief, but I'm going to try to cover as much as I possibly can and then leave maybe a couple minutes for questions. Um, so the Oligo Scan is an intracellular heavy metal and mineral test. We're using spectrophotometry, which is the full visible light spectrum, to measure the accumulation of heavy metals and minerals in the tissue of the skin. Um, this is my test report in December 2016. Um, you can see on this report, deficiency is on the left, excess is on the right um, and for minerals. And you can see how mineral deficient I was in phosphorus, zinc, chromium. Um, my vitamins were very middle average, uh, B9 particularly. Um, that's a sign, that when the B9 is low, that can be a sign of the MTHFR genetic mutation. Um, and then my heavy metals were slightly elevated cadmium. So this is from college. I was a party animal. Um, I scanned myself and I didn't believe it, probably my ego, but it was a wake up call for me. I scanned myself um, a month later and it was the same. And that was really when I realized that my lifestyle, my environment, my diet, uh, my water was, was really poor and I needed to make a change. Um, my grandfather always taught me to practice what you preach. So um, I've basically, over the past eight years, I've changed my life tremendously. And I've been able to almost completely normalize my minerals, my vitamins, and my heavy metals. Um, so this is after a lot of work and a lot of change, but it is possible. Fat is stored, I'm sorry, metals and toxins are stored in the fat. So anytime we're carrying excess fat, we're likely carrying excess toxins. So a lot of times it's difficult to lose weight because in my opinion, the liver is compromised, but also we're holding onto a lot of metals and toxins. Um, so it is, it is an important thing to consider. Anytime you're carrying excess weight, the body is not balanced and it's creating stress. And stress is absolutely one way it manifests into this report is, is stress on the metals and the minerals. Um, this is the periodic table of elements. Uh, I, I use this a lot. This is really important. There's all kinds of different antagonist synergist relationships on the periodic table. And we're gonna, we're gonna explain this in more detail, but this is like my guiding star. I, I really reference this a lot. So to give you a little understanding of the Oligo scan, uh, I already mentioned it's an insulator test for heavy metals and minerals. We're using light. Uh, the report's giving us 43 elements. It's non-invasive, it's instant. We're testing the palm of the hand. Uh, we've been around for 12 years. Uh, we have over 250 clinics in the US. Um, it's my father's company. He's been running it since 2012. Um, formerly, he started Douglas Labs. Um, my dad, my grandpa, and my godfather started Douglas Laboratories in the 80s. They were really um, pioneers in the nutritional industry space, and they grew that company for 30 years before selling to Nestle. Um, so that's kind of my background. I've been in this stuff my whole life. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but really it's, it's spectrophotometry. It's been around for a while. We're just the first ones to apply this to the tissue of the skin. It's all about absorption and reflection of light. Um, you know, Otto Warburg won the Nobel Prize in 1931 using spectrophotometry. So like I said, it's been around for a while. And this is the, the, the spectral range. This is the light that we're shining in the tissue of the skin. Every metal and mineral reflects and absorbs light differently based on the atomic emission spectra of that element. So um, you can see like silver, cadmium, mercury, all these metals and elements have different atomic emission spectra. So that's what we're measuring. Um, we're testing the hand, right? We're not testing the liver, we're not testing the heart, we're not testing the brain. So the only way to know the levels in that organ is to actually get a biopsy and test it. Of course, that's extremely invasive. Not a lot of people are gonna do that. That being said, I can test somebody that's had an amalgam filling for 40 years and the mercury is high in the hand. I can test somebody that's had a, 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 a contrast, um, MRI, gandolinium, extremely toxic. It shows up in the hand. So that tells me that these metals and minerals are being deposited all throughout the body, but it's giving us a baseline of what's intracellularly in the hand tissue. Um, blood, hair, and urine, you know, blood is the circulation system. It's what's in transport. Um, if you test high and heavy metals in the blood, you got a serious issue because the body's gonna do everything it can to push metals from the blood to the peripheral tissue, to the fat, to the organs. Um, it wants to stay in homeostasis. So if it's high in the blood, it's probably from amalgam filling or it's probably in your environment, in your water, in the air. Um, a hair test is looking at the past three months of excretion. 
Um, the hair is not a major excretion pathway for metals. You can pick up trace amounts of anything in the hair, but usually the more metals that the body's holding on to, the less is going to be in the hair. And then urine, it's been around for a while. It's the gold standard, provoked or unprovoked, using a chelating agent like an EDTA. Um, it's an extracellular test. Blood, hair, and urine are extracellular, so they're not measuring intracellular, what's actually in the cell. Um, so this is what the test report looks like in, in its fullness. Um, we're going to go through this. This is just uh, basically what the software looks like. You have all your patient, patient lists in there. Um, these are the interactions between metals and minerals, and that's how I'm going to spend the majority of the rest of this presentation is diving into the top trends that I see the most in, in test reports. This is a questionnaire. Um, this is a questionnaire that I made with our friends from Herbalix, and I'm going to expand on this more in the coming days, but I can't look at somebody's test and truly know what is wrong with them or what, how they accumulated these metals. I need to look at the root cause, and the only way to do that is to be the investigator and to understand where the toxicity could be coming from. So this questionnaire is amazing. It has, you know, what do you eat? What do you drink? Um, you smoke? Where do you live? Vaccination, supplements, surgeries. You sleep with Wi-Fi on. Um, medical history, surgeries. You know, it, this is extensive. I'm going to start adding more chemical sources to this. Like, do you use air freshener? Do you use antiperspirant? Um, chemicals are really, you know, we're being bamboozled by chemicals, um, and they they show up in the test, and we'll get to that. So I've tested over a thousand people in the past eight years with the Oligo scan. Um, I felt I felt um, the need to create this presentation um, because of what I'm seeing, and a lot of I'm seeing a lot of the same stuff. So let's go through it. Um, we're going to do a couple case studies. Eleven. So this is the first case study. This is a perfect test. I tested this person at A4M two years ago. I had a feeling before I tested her that she was going to be perfect. Um, the way she carried herself, she was actually an NLP practitioner, so she does like. Um, energy and, and uh, therapy with people, but the way she presented herself was really phenomenal. I, I couldn't tell any stress from her, but her test was perfect. Um, you want there to be this spiralization of, mineral, of, of balance in this test, so right to left to right to left to right to left, um, based on how the minerals are listed there. So you can see deficiencies in excess, she's at zero percent. Her test is literally perfect. Um, despite having some elevated metals, right? Look at her aluminum, is slightly high. This dark line um, between high minus and high plus, we want to be on the left-hand side of that line. It generally is, is an indication of low. Anything to the right is going to indicate some toxicity. Um, really, the goal should be all greens with heavy metals. I've never seen all greens in my life of testing people. I've always seen yellows. So yeah, it, you know, we live in a, a rather toxic world with a lot of exposure. Um, and her vitamins were almost, you know, almost perfect. D slightly low. We want to be um, above this invisible line. There was an invisible line in the middle here. We want to be on the right hand side of that. Um, blockage suspicion for heavy, uh, heavy metal elimination due to sulfur conjugation. This is looking at your sulfur in relation to the rest of your minerals. You need two things to detox: zinc and sulfur. So the sulfur, when it's on the right like this and it's green, that's that's perfect. So this person has enough of the raw ingredients, the raw minerals, to detoxify heavy metals. Um, let's look at the second example. So this is an example of a vegan. Uh, I see this all the time. Uh, it's deficiency across the board, particularly in the minerals. Um, you can see copper and zinc. I see that uh, quite often. You know, my question will be, where are you getting the copper and where are you getting the zinc in the vegan diet? Um, it's really about three things when it comes to absorbing uh, minerals, right? It's about digestion, absorption, and assimilation. Are you digesting? Are you absorbing? Are you assimilating into the body? I personally just don't believe that we can get enough copper, zinc, B vitamins, B6, B12, B, uh, B6, B9, B12, vitamin A from ve vegetarian diets. Um, so this is, I see this all the time in vegans. Uh, also, this B9 is really interesting. This is folate. Um, this, when this is low, it can be a sign of the MTHFR genetic mutation. 44% um, of the population has the gene mutation. It can't break down, they can't methylate so, uh, synthetic folic acid, synthetic folate. That's a big deal. I mean, if you're eating a lot of processed food that has fortified folic acid and you can't break it down, it's accumulating in the body, it can lead to OCD, ACD, um, ADD, depression, anxiety. Um, it's found in processed foods, primarily. Synthetic, can't break it down, you got issues. Um, 
So, you know, with, with vegans, I see a lot of the vitamins really in the middle road here. Um, just not getting the most bioavailable form of nutrition. Um, case study three. Okay, so this is the most complicated oligo scan analysis that we'll have to talk about, but it's important. So this is an example of copper, slightly copper toxic, and it's leading to a zinc blockade. So my mentor, John Gamble in Australia, he's done over 4,000 tests with the oligo scan. He's wrote a book called Mastering Chronic Disease, Toxicity, Deficiency, and Infection. And he talks about copper toxicity can come from inheriting it from your parents. It can come from copper IUDs in women. It can come from chlorinated swimming pools. They add the copper as a fungicide. Um, it can also come from municipal water. It leaches the, uh, the fluoride leaches the copper pipes and it gets into the municipal water. Um, there's two schools of thought when it comes to copper. Copper toxicity, like I just mentioned, and then copper deficiency. Um, Jason Hommel, if you've heard of him, Alfonso Manzo, talk about copper deficiency. We need copper to mobilize the iron in the body. Um, so it's interesting when you see high copper like this. And I think the first thing is identifying, is this a true copper toxicity? Where did the copper come from? Um, I talked to Morley Robbins three weeks ago, and he was telling me to think more in terms of the liver. Um, the copper is high, and we have to ask, why is it high? Was it from toxicity? Or is it a sign that the body has chemicals that are causing the copper to show us high? And it's interesting, I don't have the answer, but I, I can tell you that basically what's happening is the excess copper is pushing the zinc to the peripheral tissue. It's actually a false positive. It's, it's showing us that the zinc is elevated, but it's elevated because the excess copper is blockading the absorption of the zinc. So Dr. John Gamble would say that we need to take, take additional zinc here to chelate the excess copper so that the zinc can get back to where it needs to be. Um, personally, I, I'm kind of split on the decision. I think we probably, I think we don't get, most people don't get enough copper in their diets, um, but I think the copper toxicity can be true in some cases. It really just depends, and that's why I look at the questionnaire, because I need to understand how we got here. Um, I think ultimately it comes down to the liver. I think most people have compromised liver. Um, where do you get the highest sources of copper from diet? beef liver, am, ruminant animal liver. Um, so that's how I would really help people that are deficient in copper. But for this, I think that chelating the copper using a zeolite or using zinc is probably gonna be beneficial. Regardless, there's not balance here. There's, there's distortion. Um, so that's the most complicated, hard to address thing that we see. But it's very interesting because uh, there's two schools of thought. Um, you can see that zinc is literally one of the most important minerals for detox. Um, you can see here, these are physiologies. So this is the third page of the Oligoscan report. And this is basically just comprised of physiologies and their indexes based on the minerals that comprise of these indexes. So you can see that because the person's zinc is out of whack, it's unbalanced, it's affecting seven out of 10 of the physiologies. So I like to use the physiology page and match it to person's symptoms that they're experiencing. Um, are they experiencing any of these different physiologies? And then you can kind of go from there. Okay, fourth person. So this is an example of somebody carrying a lot of excess weight. Um, anytime that you're carrying 50 pounds, 60 pounds excess weight, you're putting extreme stress on the body. It's showing again, imbalance. Um, chromium is insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction, blood sugar. Um, you see this a lot. What's really interesting is the boron. Boron is the hormonal element. It's necessary for steroid hormone metabolism. So the extra boron doesn't mean they're boron intoxicated. It means that the body's accumulating the extra boron. It's holding onto it to improve steroid synthesis. Because the fat tissue um, from somebody that's overweight has metabolic syndrome, inflamed fat cells, likely producing bad estrogens to counteract that, the body's holding on to the extra boron. Uh, really interesting. Um, phosphorus, you can see also here is low. Phosphorus is really interesting. It's, it's the mitochondria, it's the ATP of the cell. So there's four things that correlate with, high, with low phosphorus, okay? One is adrenal stress. Two, is, it could be a sign of a parasite. Three, it can be a dental amalgam filling. Or four, it can be alcohol. Alcohol will deplete the body of phosphorus. Usually it's adrenal stress and, and uh, amalgam fillings. But for the, the cases where it's not any of the three, including alcohol, can usually be a sign of a parasite. Um, we can talk about more about parasites later if I have some time, but selenium, low. Now you can see that this person has had amalgam filling. When you see the mercury this high, 
it's almost nine out of 10 times from an amalgam filling. Um, B9, low again. Mercury will prevent the absorption of selenium, iodine, um, phosphorus, and zinc, potentially. Also vitamin D, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this one is a hypothesis. So this is high lithium. Um, I can't prove this, but I don't like these smartwatches. They have lithium batteries. I think they leach into the skin. Uh, I don't think there's any reason why anybody with common sense would put a computer on their skin 24-7. You just don't need it. It's EMFs. It, you know? And is the battery leaching into the skin? I don't know. Uh, I just don't like these things, but I think there probably is correlation there. Um, Another example of amalgam fillings. You can see the vitamin D, how low it is. I tested Dr. Mercola at the biohacking show. Um, his D was super low. And he was, he was like, I don't know why this is low. I have the best blood vitamin D out of anybody at the show. And he came back the next day and he's like, I know why that D is low. It's because I had an amalgam filling. And we know that mercury prevents the absorption of vitamin D into the cell. So the blood D could be different than the intracellular D. It's showing two different things. Iodine deficiency, I see this one literally probably in seven out of 10 people. Um, for pregnant women, iodine deficiency can impact IQ by 15 to 30 points. Uh, it's the master mineral, in my opinion. I actually make my own. Um, it's hard to make, I don't recommend it, but well, if you're trying to empower your health, it's, it's, a, it's cool. Um, but iodine is super important, and iodine is affected by the halogens, fluoride, chlorine, and bromide. Bromide comes from processed vegetable oil, processed food, but the fluoride and the chlorine are coming from water, municipal water, chlorinated uh, swimming pools. See this one a lot. You can see it, it all comes down to the periodic table. Fluoride, chlorine, bromide, iodine right next to it. Um, we're gonna talk about aluminum and silica real quick before I run out of time. Um, aluminum, I see it all the time. Antiperspirants, cookware, um, anti-acid, pepsid ACs. Um, it's in the water. Uh, it's everywhere. It's, it's in processed foods. Um, it, it's, it's really in abundance. And if you ask somebody that's high in aluminum, do you sweat? Usually it's no. Uh, antiperspirant, anti-sweat. You block the lymphatic system. The metals have nowhere to go. They can accumulate in the breasts. Um, aluminum is also, I think, one of the biggest causes of Alzheimer's. It goes to the brain. Um, the brain's hydrophilic. The aluminum is attracted to the brain. Um, it's tough, you gotta sweat. That's the key with aluminum, you gotta break a sweat. Um, I also do like zeocharge, uh, zeolite. It's, a, it's the highest form of silica zeolite and it helps bind to the aluminum. Uh, but really it's about preventing, it's about prevention. Where's the aluminum coming from? Gandolinium, rare earth element. We do not want this in our bodies. It's found in the MRIs, with the contrast. Um, it's, it's toxic. Uh, it's, it's, we don't want this in the body. It's hard to get rid of. Um, but I see it nine out of 10 times with the, when the gadolinium is high, it's from people that have the contrast. So I'm running out of time here, but cadmium is also another big one. Where does cadmium come from? Living in a metropolitan area. Um, the soil, uh, phosphate fertilizers have a lot of cadmium. Um, it can come from air pollution, cigarette smoke, um, very, very prevalent heavy metal. Uh, long COVID, I don't have enough data to prove this, but usually with people that have long COVID or it's compromised immune system, you're gonna see mineral deficiencies and metal toxicities across the board. And I guess I'll end on that. Really, um, you know, we're looking for toxicities and deficiencies. So we wanna identify the source of metals, where they're coming from, reduce that. Um, and then we wanna provide the building blocks, which are the minerals from diet. And then we wanna maximize excretion. So sauna, um, zeolites. Um, I really like the sauna. It, it, it increases our body's excretion capability and we're able to excrete metals. So sweating is, is key. Movement, um, lymphatic system, right? So jumping on a rebounder can be really good. Um, massage can be a really good way. But really it's about changing lifestyle and diet. It's, it's, that's 70% of it. Um, I guess I'll, I'll save room for the last one. This is, I gotta mention this one because it's really important. Um, antimony. It comes from PET plastics, from drinking water. And this lady I tested in Florida, um, she told me she couldn't lose the weight. She's trying everything to lose the weight. Nothing's working. I tested her, see the high antimony. And sure enough, she drink, has been drinking plastic bottled water on her ranch in Florida for the past 10 years. The water is you know, in the sun, it's in the heat, it, the plastic's leaching into the water. And she has a sluggish thyroid, her hormones are messed up. She can't lose the weight because she's got antimony in her body. 
So it, there's all kinds of correlations with this stuff. All these metals and minerals have correlations with each other, antagonist synergist relationships. So that's why I, I, I like this test. Um, I like to look at what metals are high, where they came from, how they're impacting the minerals, and then go from there. It's hard to address the mineral if there's a metal that's blockading that absorption of that mineral. So um, yeah, that's all I got today. I'm out of time, but um, we're testing people at our booth. So if you're interested, come by and uh, we'll scan you for heavy metals and minerals. You do need to know your blood type. If you don't know your blood type, we do sell um, blood type kits for $20. You can take one home tonight, test yourself, and then come back tomorrow and we can scan you. Uh, the machine is the machine. There's two components. There's the machine, which is $350. You buy that separately, not through us. You'll give us the serial number. Um, the second component is the software. Uh, the software comes with for the show. It's 10% off, so it's usually $2,900. It's 10% off, so $2,600. Um, comes with 45 tests for the show. Usually it's 35. So if you do the math, it's like $57 cost to test without the device. Um, there's no subscription. There's no yearly fee that comes with the software and those tests loaded on there. After you go through and do 45 tests, we'll give you a warning when you're 10 tests remaining. We'll say, hey, your test meter's low. If you want to recharge your test, your test meter, and you would just pay per test. So the test cost is anywhere from 37 to $47 a test. Most clinics and practitioners charge from 150 to 250. I've seen 300 a test, depends on what you want to charge. Yeah. All right, thanks guys.